Greetings, beautiful souls. Greetings, beautiful soul family. It's been a while and I missed you. Now, I was thinking about what is it that we focus on this year? What kind of the changes and energy we will follow? And finally, yesterday morning, I had a ta-da moment when I understood it. So the last two years, we focus about um, numerology of the month and move ourselves through it. Now, this year, we're going to focus on the numerology of this year, which is the number six and the year of the truth. And we will follow full moon and the new moon um, with the intentions of letting go what we no longer need, what no longer serves us in positive way. And we will focus on the feeling ourselves with the new intentions that are manifesting our new selves. We will work on the transformation from the three-dimensional human being who lives in the survival pattern into fifth-dimensional human being who can hold physically five, six, and the seventh dimension in the body, be Christ-like, Magdala-like, and still be living in the human body but it will be living in the evolutionary pattern. So our job is to shift from the 3D survival pattern into 5D evolution pattern. And of course, you don't want to right away shoot for any other higher dimension because first you need to land this and then you can shoot up for the higher. It's like you're climbing the steps. You cannot take more than two or three steps at a time, depending how long legs and strength in your legs you have. So there's no need to overexhaust our energy when we can take it step at a time and get to the destination where we would like to be. I'm excited and I'm back in the writing and um, starting to writing this in the new book. I will speak exactly about this, moving ourselves from the 3D survival pattern into 5D evolution pattern. So the year number six is the year of the truth. We are supposed to see the truth in our life, in our personal life, in ourselves, in our family, in our community, and in this world. Now, seeing the truth, that real down truth, is not always the most prettiest or the easiest thing. Because when you see something, you suddenly realize, oh, wow, that is not pretty. Um, that is dysfunctional or it scares me. So imagine it did this way before you would wear a pink glasses or, you know, like horses would have these little things by the eyes and going forward and being literary. I don't want to say the ignorant, but um, not being able to see everything as it is. Now our pink glasses were taken off, our little controlling things by the eyes were taken away, and we are able to see. And what we see, it is not nice. We see the world that is devastated with COVID restrictions and the illness and the problems. It doesn't matter on which side of it it is. We all are separated. There is the one side of the believers. There is the other side of the believers. Which one holds the truth? Each side would fight you that they are right. Now we see the world polarized by the war. Which side are you going to take? Depending on what the media will influence you, what you are reading and so much on, that side you are going to take if you are living in that particular country you have no choice you have to take that kind of the side right until you exercise your choice and leave the country and decided to do something else but the question even is can you so leaving that alone what we are going to learn first is to be neutral stop separating ourselves even more then they want us to be separated and start embracing each other as that oneness. It doesn't matter what kind of the preferences you have. We are all the same. We all have love in our heart. 
And you know, some of them may have forgotten about it, but we all want to have the same. We want to have a food in our stomach. We want to have a roof about our head. We want to have a safety and security for ourselves and our family. So let's start by the feeling neutral. Where right? there's kind of a place where you surrender all your wants and the needs of your judgment and of your fears. This is easier said than done, but for the moment of the being, it's absolutely a doable kind of the energy and a doable kind of the thing. The next thing, we want to change this world, right? But at first, we need to change ourselves. There is something interesting from the ancient teachings or the ancient wisdom and the knowledge that you can find. They do not focus their teaching on the changing of society. They start to build a society with kind of the, you know, the rules and the way of the life, how it should be. But they all start from the beginning from themselves. So let's focus this year when you can, as much as you can on yourself and your personal transformation. Because if there's going to be a plenty of us who will manage this personal transformation, who will manage to be a presence of that fifth and higher dimensional energy, we can connect all around the world. We can create a hundred monkey syndrome, which I think in the humans and for the size of the earth, we need probably at least 144 thousands of souls. But it is absolutely doable and the fifth dimensional energy is everything possible. So let's shoot for it. Let's connect together with that personally transform energy. And let's hold the unconditional love and the peace for the earth. So everybody can learn that energy imprint from us and that can reach to the world and make the changes that we desire to see. So we will start with in us. I think um, what I'm doing from sessions and what is going on you know, in my life usually goes right hand in the hand and so much on. We all are going through this personal war inside of us. Conflict, right? This conflict between what kind of the people are we? Are we good people? Are we a bad people? Um, have I been good and bad in my past life? Uh, am I here to save the karma because the bad things may be happening to me? It is a resolution of the karma or something I have done in the past life? Who are you? That's a good question to ask, right? And why are you feeling this way? I think it comes down to the choices. It is not of what you have done in the past whenever it's in this lifetime or the past lifetime. It's all about who are you today? What are you choose to be today? Are you good or are you bad? It all comes to the choices. Am I gonna choose to do good in this world intentionally and consciously? Or am I going to choose to do bad in this world, intentionally and consciously. I hope that you can feel as I'm saying it, there's no judgment. We are here, we make choices and we have our experiences. And of course, our experiences are affecting to the others. But when you're looking at it, I don't want you to judge yourself. I would like you to decide for yourself, are you good or are you bad? going to settle at least the beginning of this conflict inside of you because that will determine your journey your way of life now in our body the organ gallbladder represents the energy of the choices it is encoded within us now body is a microcosm of the microcosm it is encoded within us that we can make choices. Choices about what we're gonna think and what we are going to feel. Isn't that interesting? And the gallbladder, if you guys join my soul healing um, classes, which I know many of you already did, gallbladder is the vessel for our mind, ego consciousness. 
And because, you know, we are all born into the human body that is affected by the animal DNA energy, we all start with the ego and we know that the ego makes a really poor choices. Poor little guy, it's not that he wants to be bad or wants to make your life miserable. He just wants to protect you by any kind of the, um, of the way, whatever he has to do. And then your heart is the um, seed of your soul. And the heart communicates you through you with the spleen, same as the ego likes to communicate through your liver. They have like this, you know, sidekick, right? Like talca. And so <laughs> heart and the spleen would be belonging to your soul. Now, interestingly enough, in the acupuncture, and please know I'm not an acupuncture specialist. I just love to read the books and use the acupressure for my own benefits. But there's a point, gallbladder 24, which is, you know, somewhere here. You guys want to, somewhere probably here, oh, where you want to um, Google gallbladder 24. If you Google it, you're going to get a little picture. I'm going to show you where the point is. The gallbladder 24, you usually stimulate when you feel frequently undecisive. That means when you cannot make your choice, right? There are you know, several other reasons for the healthy benefits. Why would you stimulate the gallbladder 24 and connect it with the other points for the bigger or more deeper benefit? But one of them is the undecisiveness. Now, what is also interesting that your gallbladder 24, it's called the point of the sun and the moon. It connects um, spleen and the gallbladder meridian. I'm going to see if I'm telling that to you right. Meeting point of the gallbladder and the spleen channel. Big book here. The manual of acupuncture. So we have a sun and we have moon. The sun energy is your young, strong, masculine, divine within. The moon energy is your yin, feminine, divine within. So if you are start stimulating your gallbladder 24, you will feel like you can, you know, make a decision I can relieve you from that kind of the way and it says okay I can make decisions about what's that it is am I a good person am I a bad person and I'm here to help of humanity or am I just a forgotten I don't know who here that is probably here on the punishment <laughs> or in the prison of the earth because nobody knows what I have done forget about that one if you're watching this video, if you are interested, you are a good soul. You have just forgotten. You have become a lost time traveler who just feel lost. I need to find a way home. And I think the connecting together, we do find our way home. I truly, truly believe that. So the gallbladder 24 connects you to the sun and the moon point. Now, all this connects us to the full moon and the new moon. So we know that a full moon and the new moon goes in these two weeks intervals. Full moon, we usually like on this big release and letting go of what no longer serve us in the positive way. The new moon, we create all the new intentions of what we would like to attract in our life. But there's this exciting point, what the lights of the universe share with me. They said that um, it's very easy to just do it in the two weeks intervals. Instead of just focusing on this one big deal of how I'm going to do this, accomplish this and get lost somewhere in the half of it. So when we start work on our transformations from that 3D survival pattern into the 5D evolutionary pattern, we can really focus only on the two weeks at a time work, which is absolutely doable. And as a soul family, if we do this together, we empower each other. We empower each other in most incredible ways because we're going to pull each other same like the high tide to the low tide. Think as a school of the fishes, fish. 
are. Think of this big boat that we have a complete trust that's going to get us to the place where we need to go to home. And we just go simply with a high tide and a low tide instead of fighting it against it. So we know that a high tide and low tide happens twice a day. Um, yeah, I Google it, yeah, the two of them in the 24 hours and the 50 minutes. You have a two high tides and you have a two low tides. Now, we do not need to do all of this in one day. We will consciously and intentionally spread it in the two weeks. So on the full moon of the energy, oh, and I'm sorry before I go into the full moon, the also interesting part is this go with your gallbladder point. The high tide and the low tide is um, created by the increased gravity from the sun and the moon. It's not only the moon, it's also the sun. They're literally working, you know, together to, to create the increased gravity to put water one way on the other water the other way. So the sun and the moon, your yang and the yin energy, masculine and the feminine, that's your twin flame. That's your love affair up there. And that all reflects in your body. Your lower belly, second chakra, is your moon energy, your feminine divine within you, your shakti within you. Moon, your sixth chakra, your mind. That is your divine masculine within you, the divine Shiva within you. Or find any another, you know, um, example. Mary Magdala, Jesus Christ. Um, but I guess I'm using the Shiva and the Shakti because we all think about a phenomenal relationship, right? So why not? Why not to think about this phenomenal fated relationship? That's what your body is, what your energy is within you, your twin flame energy right within you that will give you the wholeness. And then with that wholeness, you can attract another person with the wholeness. But let's leave that for the next time or for some another time. Now, since the sun and the moon are affecting the waters of the earth, they're also affecting the waters in your body because... Body is mainly in the water, right? And if, you know, for the thousands of years, we have this documented acupuncture point, gallbladder 24, which it's, you know, founded from the time of the records from the Yellow Emperor, which is about plus minus 2000, I'm sorry, 4,500 years back from now. That is impressive, isn't it? There is some universal cosmic law truth in it that this point survive all those thousand years, sun and the moon within you. So if it affects the waters of our earth, it affects the waters of our body. Now, the water element is connected to your divine energy, right? Your feminine divine. And feminine divine communicates with you through the emotions. It's usually about the full moon, right? We come becoming this emotional mass and we start remembering all these things. And oh my God, this happened to me. This didn't happen to me. And all we have to learn to let go and to start working with those two energies. So on the full moon, we will practice letting go. I would recommend to reading the book, Letting Go by Stephen Hopkins. Oh, David Hopkins, I'm sorry. <laughs> Talk to David Hopkins. Um, I referred to his books before. This one was recommended to me. It's absolutely phenomenal. And it's a very beautiful, um, I would say a simple explanation of the map of consciousness. So if you are familiar with the map of consciousness from the David Hopkins, this is a great reference book that I think that you will reach the whole year into. It will help you to see on the which part of the map of consciousness you are and how you can turn it, how you can let go. Again, with a very simple kind of the explanation. Even if you don't read the book, letting go is the acceptance, forgiveness, finding the love for yourself and the others, exchanging the lower vibrational talks into the higher vibrational talks. So on the full moon, and full moon is coming on the Friday, March 18. That's what we're going to focus, focus on. 
um, I would say let's pick the first one of the hate and the self-hate, self-failure, um, the feeling, you know, all that kind of this, why did it fail? Why I cannot love myself? Why do I hate myself? I know it's a very strong word like that, hate, but I think that every single person I consult to who comes from the path of the light, which you all are, have that feeling of the failure and feeling, you know, of the self-hate, of not acceptance, feeling of that, you know, the deep, see that inside. And we usually, you know, feel quite ashamed to talk about it or the bad talk about it. So go inside, allow yourself to feel it. Why? Ask the question, why am I feeling this way? Why am I feeling that I have failed? Why am I feeling that these things are not working in my life? why I cannot accept myself, why I cannot love myself, why, 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 sit with it, and you will start playing with your gallbladder and the spleen, I want you to think of it as, you know, the sun and the moon are playing ball, throwing the ball to each other, playing the ping pong, throwing something, hot potatoes back and forth, your gallbladder is sending out a thought, a thinking pattern, you know. And your gallbladder catch it and transmute it into emotion. I don't like myself. Oh, I feel like a failure. I'm such a failure. Oh, yes, you are, you know. Something happened in the past, but I cannot tell it to you because I will absolutely devastate you. Okay, I guess it's better not to know it, right? Oh, maybe it will be so hard. I would never be able to deal with it. Oh, yes. Let me just protect you, okay, with what I'm doing. I will help you to be safe and secure. But if you ever come across those people who have done this to you, oops, I already said too much. Oh, my goodness, I have to be afraid of the people. It's like a puppet show. Nothing else as a puppet show. Whatever it is, listen. Listen to your puppet show, play your puppet show, put your funny socks on and pretend, okay? Don't get sucked up in it fully or get sucked up in it fully. Get into the play, I guess. And then see for what is it. See it for the truth of what it is. Yes, there has been the people in the past that have killed us. Oh my God, if I'm gonna feel, if I'm gonna meet them ever again, does it mean that they kill me every single lifetime? Ikolo says, absolutely. I says, how, how are we sure? Are we, are we knowing? Why are we attracting it to ourselves? What is inside of me that's having this magnet? Oh my God, find me and harm me, find me and harm me. Well, I cannot tell you. Well, I know. It is unresolved issue. It's an it's a energy that attracting is to you so you can release it. It's not a punishment. It is something that, that you can let go by the forgiveness, by the acceptance. Okay, Jerry so-and-so killed me in the last lifetime and he cut off my head and it was very brutal in the front of my children. I know. I forgive Jerry. He, was, he didn't know what to do or he was maybe influence of what to do or whatever was his reason to, to choose this kind of the life i'm sure i was not that only one and the life purpose that he lived for to harm me this way he probably harmed many people like that and so much on can i let it go can i let go of the fear of the people because one of them can be the jerry who does this thing to me i'm oh, for sorry jerry <laughs> if there's any jerry who's watching just the first name to put in my head. Forgiveness and letting go. What is going to happen between your sun and your moon is this. Suddenly, you start to have a different emotions. The first of all, you will not be afraid. You have a choice. You says, hey, you know what? Let, let me throw the hot potato to you. You know that you have a choice how you're going to feel about Jerry and what he have done to us? Hmm. Yes, I do. Ego says, no, 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 this is how we do. And mine says, of course we do, sweetie. 
Of course, they can choose. But we can forgive each other. If I forgive him and accept that all these things happen and, you know, doesn't matter how many times we have been killed in the past life, we always come back and somehow the soul family find each other. Can you look around to see this boat full of the people riding the high tide? Some of them are swimming with a school of fish. Some of them are surfing. Some of them are having a great time, but we are all here together. They always find each other. That send out these emotions of, I'm feeling safe. Oh my God, I'm feeling safe. I'm feeling safe. I don't have to be afraid of people. I don't have to spend a lifetime waiting if the Jerry is going to show up on my doorsteps or not. And if somebody like that will, will show up with that same um, energy print, imprint as Jerry, I may recognize them as, as oh God, this person feel like Jerry. And even though his name may be, I don't know, Brian, or maybe a female, right? It can be Lori, depending who you are. You recognize the energy imprint. And when they say, hey, would you go for the coffee? You says, oh, no, thank you. Coffee, give me, make me feel bad. <laughs> I don't like coffee, whatever. You say no. You have a choice to say no. So that is the beginning of the work. So let's focus on the full moon. And on the new moon, we will focus on finding that greatness within us and finding that slow transformation. And we'll just take it as it goes. If you would like to join me, that is what I'm going to do. And I will try to make a video with the full moon and the new moon. Now, what I'm also not is an astrologist. So I'm not an acupuncture specialist. I'm not an astrologist. I like to mingle in those fields. What I am is a soul healer. I like to look at the dynamics and the harmony between our ego mind and a soul and how they can heal and how they can create a twin flame energy inside of you. And I think that this year energy of seeing the truth, that number six, and for us working with the high tide. So to me, in my mind, the full moon is the high tide, the new moon will be the low tide and maybe even all we can shift it and play the back and forth because remember the both of them happen twice a day so whichever way it is in your head it's absolutely correct it doesn't have to be same as in my head but we're gonna look at this and it says you know to me like the high tide is gonna bring all this like oh my god what is it i we need to let go and if i'm really struggle i'm gonna go in the letting go book from the Dr. David Hopkins, oh, read Eva's Pleading Codes, one, two, three, and pretty soon there's going to be the book about the transformation. Uh, that's what we're going to do. So you have a few days until Friday 18, dig it up, focus on how your talks make you create emotions and how your emotions are corresponding to your talks. That is a basic 3D survival pattern. And then we are going to learn the evolutionary pattern. So let's get into this kind of the swing of the energies and let's see how it's going to work for you. Remember, check out the gallbladder 24. What also I have found very, really cool is that if you um, make a connection or if you work together with the gallbladder 24 and the bladder 19 um, you are covering the front and the back point of the gallbladder it creates a beautiful release uh, so look at them gallbladder 24 and bladder 19 i'm gonna leave those notes in the comments uh, let's start to think about the sun energy as your beautiful masculine divine within the moon energy as the beautiful feminine divine within your second chakra and remember they're having this beautiful love twin film relationship that actually plays off in your heart chakra so as we go through this year we'll be very good to start working on opening our heart stop being afraid of love stop being afraid of um, meeting our soul family stop being afraid of of um 
sailing in that ocean together and enjoying that thrill of the high, high tide and the low tide. It may be like we actually may enjoy this thrill of it and find our way in between. Whenever you struggle, stay in the middle energy as much as you can. Remember, you are never alone and you are never hopeless. While working on yourself, it is very appropriate, even needed, to send that unconditional love to the crystalline grid of the earth, wherever you feel that the conflict may originate from or whatever that they need it. Unconditional love is non-controlling energy. So we are not controlling the outcome of it. We are sending that enough energy that the truth will come out and that the people living in those particular parts of the world will be empowered to be courageous and take on the actions that they believe is appropriate um, uh, to their situation. So I hope you enjoyed this message. I am so happy to share with you and I'm excited actually about this year. And to be honest, it took me a little while to get excited about this year, even talking you know, about the great things are happening. But also, you know, a lot of these things in the world that are happening do bring us down. So please get excited with me and let's do this. Remember, you know, we are sitting there on our awesome boat and Oh, having a cup of the jasmine tea. You all know I love jasmine tea. And having a good time learning with our refining our way to our ancient selves, which means to be able to hold the fifth dimensional energy within this body, which I do believe is 100% possible. And all those things are possible with it. Incredible. And then really imagine that we are creating this, not imagine, believe that we are creating this 144,000 human beings connected to the heart and the mind connection effect that equals to hungry monkey effect to making the shift in this world that we we would like to see but we already are it's not that we're creating something that we would like to live in within the inner world of our being there is already that world and we extending that world to everybody around us. That is a true work of the ancients. There's a strategy to everything. And I do believe this was our strategy that we have used more than by lifetime. So allow yourself to remember it. And I'll see you on the boat. Have a wonderful week and a happy full moon. Love you. <laughs>